Hi friends, welcome back to JK Dentis. In the previous video, we have learned about basics of implantology as well as about platform switching. So in this series, today we are going to see about key implant position and AP spread rule. This topic is very important for treatment planning during implantology. So let's see the topic. For implant planning, you require to remember four main rules. What are the four main rules? The first rule says no cantilever. Second rule says no adjacent three pontic. Fourth rule says canine and molar must be considered as key implants. And the last rule says key arch position. We will see all the four rules one by one. So first rule is no cantilever. So before going on to what do you mean by no cantilever, we will first see what is cantilever. So imagine a bridge. In this bridge, this is a pyre that is a pillar and over that there is span. This bridge is supported at only one end. This area which is unsupported is considered as cantilever. Now I will correlate this example in dentistry. So in this these are the two implants and the pontic here is the cantilever. Now we will see why I said no cantilever. You have to go back in biomechanics to the principle of lever of first order. I will give the link in the description box. You can refer that. So, this will be considered as the effort arm. This will be our fulcrum and the load arm or the resistance arm. If a 25 LB force is coming on this area of the cantilever, what will happen? As I have already explained you, the resistance arm will have the mechanical advantage of 2 because of the formula that is distance into force. Here this implant will face force of 50 LB and the implant adjacent to the edentulous area will face the force of summation of 25 and 50. That is this implant will be at most risk. So in short, when we are giving cantilever, small amount of force can affect both of our implants badly, which we don't want. That's why you need to avoid cantilever. But there are cases in which cantilever can be considered as a prudent option. Which are they? In cases where we cannot place implant like if the bone in the area is very much resorbed and our ridge is not allowing us to go for the implant or if there is a case of anterior teeth in which we can take support from the canine region or we have a strong support and the area to be replaced is very small for example, if there is canine support, we can give cantilever in the area of lateral because in the anterior we have less load and less surface area is being used as a pontic. Okay, in that case only we can go for cantilever. But before going into cantilever in matter of implants, you need to remember about AP spread. So we will see what is AP spread. Now, this is our arch. These are the implants. AP spread is when you draw a line from the center of the most anterior implant and draw another line from the distal of the most posterior implant. So the distance between both these lines is considered as anteroposterior distance or AP distance. Consider that distance as X. So how much cantilever you can give? According to the literature, cantilever is 2 times the AP spread. 
spread that is 2 times the x. If this x is about 3 mm, you can give 2 into 3 that is 6. So this is an important rule for placing implants or giving cantilever. Now I will give you different examples. While placement of implant, you also need to consider different arch forms. Different arch form will have different AP spread. As in the ovoid or arch, this is the arch form. You get AP spread of 6 to 8 mm. In the second example, there is square arch. In that case, you get AP spread of 2 to 5 mm. And in the last case, there is tapered arch. When your arch is tapered, you get maximum AP spread. So, what is the importance of giving this example to you? If you see tapered arch in your patient, in that case, you can go for more cantilever. So, while planning, you need to see what kind of arch your patient have. Okay? So, tapered arch have the most cantilever because of the arch form. Now, we will see about the second rule that was no adjacent three pontic. This is not allowed. Why? As in my previous video, I have explained you about the concept of flexor. We will go back into that. The description box will have the link for the same. So, in this, at this support, the distance is 5 mm. And when the distance between the support is increased, I have already told you there is more flexor. That is flexor increases exponentially. So when an implant, you are giving three adjacent pontics. You can see that your flexor will increase exponentially because the distance between the support have increased, which we don't want. Now, the third rule is, canine and molar side rule. What is that rule? In any case, if your canine or molar is missing, you need to replace it with the implants. Why? Because of the bone physiology and the forces. These teeth will bear the maximum forces. We will see that why canine and why molar. In the canine area, Canine surface area is more, okay, first reason. Second reason, there will be action of class 3 lever or lateral forces when come, okay, this canine is missing and when lateral forces are there, as, is in, as it is in the anterior area, the contraction of temporalis and masseter muscle is less. As the contraction is less, less forces is seen in the anterior region. That's why you can consider canine for placement of a plant. Why large surface area? Obviously, if you will get large surface area, you can engage more cortex. And if you are engaging more cortex, it is advantageous for the stability of the implant. And secondarily, the molars have more span and more bite forces in that area. Obviously, if forces are more, you should have a stable support. If you will place pontic in that area, it will not be having that much of capacity to bear. At least implant will bear that. And most important rule, which is natural teeth absorbs the forces as they have PDL fibers. But implant don't absorb forces. So, you have to follow this rule for implant success. Implant will not be able to react like the tooth reacts by absorbing as a shock absorber. Now, the last rule says key arch position. What do you mean by key arch position? Key arch position says that you have to consider your whole arch is an open pentagon. In that open pentagon, the first segment is of central and lateral incisors. Third segment is of canine and the fourth segment includes the premolar as well as the molar. The rule says that when multiple missing teeth exceeds beyond the pentagon segment, you need to place key implants in each segment.
segment okay if it exceeds you require key implants in each segment you need to remember this point so our implant planning will basically have these four rules but there are some extra rules like uh, in this diagram i have shown the primary sites of implants as well as the secondary sites of implant according to that primary size sites would be at the area of the canine the distal end of the molars as well as the secondary premolar and one in the central incisors along with that our primary site is always supported by secondary implants to improve the support another rule you need to remember is that whenever you are placing the implant the inter implant distance must be 3 mm and the distance of the implant to the natural tooth must be 1.5 what does that means means you have to leave a space of 1.5 to the adjacent natural tooth and when multiple implants are placed you have to maintain a distance of 3 mm between them if you exploit this there will be bone resorption and your assembly will fail now at the end i would like to give you some question like if you have missing mandibular first molar imagine there is an arch and there is missing first molar and it has the mesiodistal space of that missing first molar is 8 mm and you know already how much length of implant you have and you need to decide how much the width of the implant must be how you can calculate that as there is only one implant i have already told you you need to maintain the distance from both the ends as 1.5 and 1.5 okay so you have 8 mm of space by maintaining 1.5 1.5 you need to subtract 3 from 8 that is you can place width of 5 mm okay so if your implant size would be 5 by 10 so with this example you get to learn how to plan for implants in this topic i have explained you about the key implant positions how to plan for implant size if you are going for any entrance exam like neat this questions can help you or my video can help you how to solve this kind of questions if you have any doubts your queries are welcome at jkdent.is@gmail.com if you like my video please press the bell icon and subscribe to my channel for more such videos thank you so much